ladies and gentlemen welcome to my shop my name is Keith I'm your host let's start off with the Pledge of Allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all on with the show we're starting off today we've we've already roughed out kind of our height and our length we left it a little bit long and we are a little bit higher we're going to be radius and we're putting the roundness on the bottom side of the nut right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take down the thickness and this is notched out because this basically was a cast product back back in the day so they squirted out a piece of bronze and that's what they made the nut well we're going to be turning or machining this we're going to be milling this we'll turn the other nut and and then do milling this diameter this width right here is Just about five thousandths under one and a quarter. Right now, this is about one three thirty eight or so. This is extruded bronze that surfaces the extruded thickness, and we're going to machine that down till we get to that width right there. We're probably going to take that to inch and a quarter to start. We're going to start out at inch and a quarter. We went over and we test fit this in the in the groove again and we know that it doesn't have too much slop in it so we're going to be probably fine-tuning that till we get it into there because we want that to be a tight fit it, it can slide a little bit but we want it to be tight we do not want this nut to be slopping around because once it's located this nut has got to stay located in in a, in a good position and sturdy all right so we're just basically going to come down on this part and we're going to take a few cuts across here and then we're going to take a cut on the other side until we get it to the right thickness. Um, we do have to turn on some power first. <laughs> you think that's annoying? Yeah, you should be here in person. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and give this like about 10 from there. We do know that we scratched across the top of there and it's pretty close to the diameter of our cutter. We're going to come across, hopefully we're just giving it a good surface finish first time across and then we can flip it over and we can work the width on the other side. Dress it off, flipped it over, and it's like 1317 right now. So we set our dial here at zero. And we'll go ahead and we'll take 25 off of here. And then we're going to get our micrometers. We're going to measure it while it's in on the parallel. bring our cutter back to start position we could cut in both directions but we like our chips to and debris to fall off the back side there instead of coming out towards us all right I got uh, looks like uh, one inch 295 all right we're gonna measure this other side now One inch, two ninety-four. So we got about a thousandth from one side to the other side.
All right, we need to come on down. We're going to come down another 25 here. We've got the block pretty well square. And <clears throat> we're going to come over here and double check this. We think where our readout was set to the side. But we're just going to check it on the outside here. And we're going to come over to the center of the part. Okay, and that actually kind of proves that we weren't centered with the edge. Okay, there's center with the edge. And we'll come over halfway here. Right there. That's. Oh, excuse me, it's not. <laughs> I'm subtracting in my head. Okay, there it is. There's half of it. Inch and a quarter, half of it's five eighths. Okay. All right, now we're going to come off of the end. And this is going to be the bottom. This will be, or, or this will be the top of the nut where we're at now. And then we're going to come over, and then we're going to put the thread in over here. There's only, what? There's only three, four things that are most important about this. This surface right here, that hole location, this diameter right here, or width, fit in that register, and that threaded hole. The rest of it is open air. Okay, I said zero there. All right, and double, we always double check. We want to make sure our knee is locked too because we want to we want to check that without any sag on the knee. And it's right there as well. All right, and we're gonna call that zero. Now our distance over to this location here is one inch 46 thousandths. Okay. It uh, looks like it. Okay, remember we have uh, we have a couple hundred thousands on the height difference here. All right, that will be our mark right there. All right, we'll get our pilot drill. All right, now we're gonna find out what size the tap size is for the nut. Took a break from uh, the project here for a quickie there, and uh, I'm checking the minor or the minimum diameter of this Acme tap here on the end. Kinda always wanna make sure the tap's gonna be able to start in the hole at least, right? So 546. All right, now if we take, we reach in here, we got like 545. I went over to the drill rack, and this is a 3564s, and it fits in there, and a 916s. Well, I, I could force the 916s in there, but this slides through freely. Anyhow, we're going to put this in here. Now, instead of running this, this is a fairly new drill nice clean there's no chips or anything else in it but I want it to run as true as possible and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pull out my 
Albright chalk, which is a good chalk and everything, but it adds that much more distance from your spindle and it sits in a collet. Why not put the drill bit in a collet? Eliminate the middle band. I'm just asking it to drill as close as possible with this drill. And I believe by eliminating the chuck. Eh, actually, I can, I can see that. Oh, this is a black oxide Chinese drill. Um, it does apparently have a little bit of run out in it. But we're satisfied it's going to be close enough to give us what we want. We are running a little bit fast. I think we're going to slow her down now. I'm hand cranking with the uh, feed dial. Okay, that's the end of the quill travel. So I'm going to bring the table up. Okay, we have gone through. Okay, I'm gonna pull out the drill. And then I'm going to stick the tap there, and we're going to see. Okay, I, it does. It goes in there about an eighth of an inch. So it's going to be a tight hole. We all like tight holes. All right. Take a little break from the uh, face converter here. Is we're not going to power tap this. We put our tap guide in here. Make sure there's plenty of juice on our tap here. All right, I'm gonna feed her down through here and we're gonna get it down as far as we can before we bottom out below the part. We'll have be far enough into it that we can actually take and lay this down horizontally and finish bringing the tap through it. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think I'm gonna get a tap handle and I can get equal torque on both sides. All right, this is how I was. There we go. Okay. Yep, a lot better. All right.
I'm going to bring it out of the hole. We're going to take a look at it and clear it out. It's a lot of material in there. All right, I'm going to blow and clear that out. It's starting to look like acne threads in there. <laughs> I'm unscrewing the handle. I'm not unscrewing the die. <laughs> ah, okay. Come down and work it through. Okay, we're going to clear it out again. Okay, the tap is down below the part right now. But it's got a ways to go before it bottoms out down in there. Okay, then we're going to pull it out, we're going to clean up our system here and probably relocate our block so we can run the tap all the way through it. We got this pretty well cleaned up, we'll move that out of the way. and. I picked up a, a ratchet and a square drive. There we go. Hack me tap all the way through the nut. Looks looks good. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna leave that in there or on there, and we're gonna see how this screws on. Feels a little tight. Try it on in the other direction here. Okay, the same, the same. Now, question was, is this, this lead screw or cross feed screw is it hardened? Well, that's simple to find out. We just take a file. I'm just looking at one, you know, 
junk file. Okay, we can file it. This is not hard. Okay, now we don't know if there's a rolled over edge here, whatever, but we do know that that nut is tight at the beginning of our thread, which this is less used than in the middle here somewhere. Just where you've commonly used the lead screw is going to have the most wear out at each extent, just like on a mill, on a bridge port, or a K&T. All the way at the extreme travels is going to have a tighter nut screw combination or contact than it is when it's in the middle where it's worn most of its life. All right, this is something, this is good. This is not, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Okay, another thing too, we're gonna run our tap through this nut in both directions. And that's just to go ahead and make sure that it passes through both directions and there's no idiosyncrasies on the tap itself. We did, we ran the tap through both directions and we did pick up a little idiosyncrasy from one, one direction to the other. And now this nut spins on here pretty darn good. Okay, I can feel just a little bit. Not much, but that's far, far less. That's not bad for... Can't hate that, can you? I can feel in here. I don't. I don't know if that's like one two thousandths. We'll be able to see that <clears throat> when we assemble it, and we can read it on the on the indicator. We could put it in a vise and we could put it um, indicator on the end of this too as well and we could see that. I think I might I might do that. Just for down here I can't get it to move and up there I can't get it to move at all. But the way that screws all the way on there, I'd hate to say that I even need to do anything to the lead screw except for or the cross screw to except for maybe polish off the OD of it. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna touch off on this end here this time. And there we go. All right, so the top hole is a half inch national fine, and that's going to be a uh, 2964 pilot drill. But we're going to, I mean, uh, tap drill, and we're going to we're going to give it a quarter inch pilot drill, and that distance over is 570 thousandths. Right there. Looks good from here. Now 
There again, we're just going to hang crank with the uh, feed uh, dial. Okay. Same thing again. Okay, we're going to put in the tap follower. We're going to use the lighter duty tap follower here. We pulled it back out to put the tap handle on. Okay, there we go. Put a little load on it. There we go. Nice looking threads in there. Okay, we're gonna go get our uh, bolt that goes in there to test it. And we're gonna get the vacuum to clean out our chips. All right, the last thing we're going to do in the Bridgeport Debbie here is we're going to drill down the width of my scale there. It's three quarter inch, and you can see that on there. This overall height of our nut, or the length of our nut, this is like two and an eighth, and this is two and three eighths, so we're about a quarter inch heavy on the length. So this one here is basically about a half an inch, and we're going to drill down three quarters of an inch with our pilot or tap size in two locations and we're just, we just kind of split the difference equally like they did all right so i'll get some power here and we'll drill those out all right there's three quarter of an inch let's go over five sixteenths on this side right there
step here, I'm going to put a radius, the, this bottom side here, giving it clearance around the hollow open area that it drags through on the apron. Okay. How many people ever wanted to try one of these like router bits right here? Well, let's test this out and we'll see how these things work. I picked this one up at the, I think Home Depot or something like that. All right. I want to paint the top of this here because I want to watch, uh, I want to watch the cut come in. I'm going to try not to make a ridge on it. I mean, we can sand it if we have to, um, but I'm just going to go ahead. Also, too, it kind of takes the glare off uh, of the top of that part there. Okay, let's get this mounted up in here. And I think I need a half inch collet. All right, now we're going to run that all the way, all the way in there like that. So it's not going to be sticking out. We want it as rigid as possible. And then we're going to bring our table up. Let's go ahead and we'll move this thing out of the way here. We're going to come in down here and this bearing here, we want that to roll along this outside edge right here for support. That's what it's there for and we're going to be, we're going to pick that up. All right. So I think how to set that, I'm going to go ahead and bring it over here where we're going to be starting. And then I'm going to crank in on the table. First off, I'm locking the knee, take all the slop out of Debbie here. And then a little bit on the X and Y. And I'm just coming in and I'm free spinning this with my finger. Okay, I can feel it dragging right there. So I'm going to call that zero on the contact here. And I'm going to go ahead and set in and out at zero right there. Okay, so theoretically now all we need to do is run our router bit or radius tool downward all right and let's go ahead and give ourselves some power here uh, speed wise and yeah, we'll give it a shot I'm just feeding it by hand. Okay, we'll back up. We're speeding it by hand again. Could probably speed it up with this material here, I think. Pretty good here. Let's see. Okay, I think that's pretty close to the 
full depth without putting a little groove in on the top. We're going to flip this 180 and take a skim on the other side. Now we didn't do anything different. This is full depth. We're feeding it by hand. Okay, we're just gonna we're we're gonna pick that up. <laughs> okay, we do have extra material on the top there, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this take that depth down. We're going to measure this distance right here and we're going to give this a mark on here and then we're going to be able to take this down until we're happy with it and then we'll sand the center to match. We scribed the liner across. It's, it's, a, it's about oh, 30,000 down from where it needs to be. But we're basically 3 16 of an inch got to come off of the top of here. Alright, so we're setting zero on our dial as far as the travel. We know we'll come down at least three sixteenths of an inch. There's a hundred, hundred and fifty. We'll just call it one seventy five. We'll take it to right there. All right. Lock everything down. Okay. Feeding by hand. Okay, we're going to 180 it. There we go.
Okay, I like that. I think I'm going to trim the top of this off with a half inch end mill. We got the half inch collet in here. All we got to do is pop that out and put in the other piece there. So let's do that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, change up on the speed here. All right, that's looking uh, like we de deburred a little bit, and let's give it a try. All right, new announcement. The best ball caps in the community are back in stock right now. Now, anybody that's worn one of my Adams caps with the uh, cool lining, adjustable strap, knows that I'm walking the talk and I'm getting her done on ball caps. Now, there are a couple new changes to the ball cap on my turn right ball cap I'm offering it now in a solid color we're doing them in black and we're doing them in navy now we carried over the same cap the same great ball cap the Adams cap with the Patriot attitude artwork on the front and the emoji I was using at the time when I designed this ball cap is still on the side of it I like it I'm gonna continue with that same style right here. This is the black. I also have it in the Mississippi mud. I have it in the charcoal. Charcoal is pretty close to the black, but it is a little lighter. These are stone finished ball caps. This is also in the Navy as well. Now, at the last time when we came out with the Patriot Attitude, we had several camouflage caps, and the most popular ended up being the uh, XD3 made by Pacific okay this hat doesn't I'm not sure if this hat floats in the water I haven't proven it yet and I'm not going to claim it does but I am going to claim it was the most popular camouflage hat at the time and we offer the Patriot attitude in that as well all right I just wanted to bring you up to speed and let you know that I have the ball caps back in stock <music>